Nityanandam and welcome back to NTV News Live. It is a Sunday, the 7th, 5th, 2010. Today in morning satsang, Swamiji talked on a subject. Experience the God state with God. The words from this morning satsang sounded like the most beautiful poem. And even that doesn't come close to the real experience of the satsang. Words again failed in attempt to describe that which cannot be described. Whatever is life thread for you, you will reach that source. And the very need that you want to experience will reach you to the gods. Now, let's hear Swamiji himself. Small clip from Morning Satsang. If you look into your source, you will know your source and my source is one and the same. <coughs> Please understand, when I say realize yourself, I mean actually when you realize yourself, you will realize yourself and myself is one and the same. In the beginning, the experience of God can happen only with God. Then, your very being becomes God. Then that starts transmitting that experience to others. Anybody who is seeking something more than the five sense pleasure and challenging, if he sees my picture or listens to word or one glimpse, he has to feel connected beyond this logic. As long as people who can't share love with real people, who don't know the quality of openness exists, the romance-based industry will be alive. Means constantly watching in the TV and movie, in the internet, the duets and romance scenes and the stories, but never able to express that love by yourself to a living person. Whatever is life thread for you, you will reach that source. If you want to experience God, naturally it can happen only with God. And the very need that you want to experience will reach you to God. Will reach you to intense energy field. Will reach you to the God consciousness. The person who is radiating God consciousness. For the full message, check out youtube.com forward slash live bliss foundation message is also telecast live every morning 8 a.m indian standard time now let us continue with some other news from ashram legal news first in a dramatic turn of events in the nityananda case one of the prime complaints against Nityananda has been arrested in the United States on grave charges of child molestation. Vinay Bharadwaj, 35, cited in Lenyan Karupan's FIR as the victim of an unnatural sex offense committed by Paramahamsa Nityananda, has been arrested on three counts of child molestation. In July 2010, the young victim finally came forward to speak to the police, revealing that Vinay had molested her on several occasions. He was arrested on Tuesday, November 13, in the Los Angeles County. Vinay Bharadwaj, who used to volunteer full-time at the Bellevue Temple of Nityananda's Live Bliss Foundation in the United States, 
was asked to leave the temple for questionable behavior. His removal from the temple was a huge blow to Vinay's status and he began speaking virulently against Nityananda and the organization to private audiences. However, he continued to frequent the temple as a visitor and apparently misused his old spiritual name Sri Nitya Vimalananda and his earlier position at the temple to gain the trust of the public. Many of the other visitors were not aware that he was no longer associated with Live Bliss Foundation, while the organization was unaware that he was misleading the public. Vinay's big chance for vengeance came in the form of Lenin Karupan, who was on the lookout for disgruntled individuals to help put together his F. I air against Nityananda. According to Lenin's report, Vinay Bharadvaj had confided to him that Nityananda had forced him into a sexual relationship with himself. For reasons that have now become obvious, Vinay never came forward in person to register his complaint. An email allegedly received from him by the CAD was the sole basis of the charge against Nityananda. Do we need to comment? Following this dubious complaint, Nityananda was charged under APC 377 Unnatural Sex. Now that it has come to light that the victim is himself the perpetrator of the most disgusting of unnatural sexual offenses. The CID will obviously need to re-examine his 377 charge against Nityananda. It may be recalled that the entire case against Nityananda was adjourned in six instances over the same issue of collecting the statements of the same Vinay Bharadvaj. The CID had claimed that Vinay was in touch with them and that they had several emails from him in their position, but they needed time for personal interrogation. In spite of being granted extra time by the court twice, the CID reported zero progress on the matter. The CID then proposed to file a special leave petition for permission to travel to the United States and examine the victim, which proposal, however, was not carried out at all. The SLP issue alone ensured that the case dragged on for an additional three months. At the end of this period, no CID officer had traveled to the United States, nor had the mysterious victim been interrogated or even located. Why? Now, with the arrest of Vinay Bharadvaj, the mystery of the missing 377 victim resolves itself. With a big-time informer turning out to be a big-time criminal instead, the CID is going to have a tough time explaining the credential over the other witnesses it, get, it has tried to line up against Nityananda. Now let us continue with some other news from Ashram. Here we are, busy with the satsangs again. The schedule for today is Hyderabad and satsang was conducted in the afternoon on a topic conflict-free living. Also this afternoon there was an end satsang in Mumbai and Tirunel Valley. Tonight end satsang are going to be conducted in Greensboro, North Carolina, United States, then in Istanbul, Turkey. Topic is Nitya Dhyan explained in depth. After Houston, in Texas, United States, and also one in Port Washington, 
New York, United States. And as usual on uh, weekends, we have a uh, live bliss program level one uh, conducted. That is an introductionary meditation program which works with uh, energy levels in human's body with chakras. Also, there was a uh, medical camp organized in a nearby village in Kempana Hali. We will give you a full report tomorrow. Today, ingenious children had a great session with Swamiji. And what to say about that? The way children experience Swamiji, it's just amazing. It's such excitement and openness. We have to learn so much for these children. In my life, at the age of four or five, I started learning levitation. Wow. Hmm? Uh, as kids, learning is very easy. I'll teach you that simple technique of levitation. As I said, how the balloon flies? If more air is filled in balloon, it flies. Same thing. Mm. Pop. Pop. You will not pop, don't worry. <laughs> I'll take care, you will not pop, okay? <laughs> you yourself will try your best to fill air in your body. Using the technique I gave now. Then, I will pour directly energy into your body so that when you lift, when your body lifts, lifting, staying in the air and landing happens without pain. Because when you land, you should not hurt your butt. <laughs> Come on. Are you guys ready? Yes! yes. Uh, sit in Bhatmasana. Inhaling should happen. Not... Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Understand? Ma, get the clay. I'll make a Ganesha. And whoever levitates properly for them, it's a gift. The Inner Awakening participants are continuing with their program, spending lots of time with Swamiji. Some of them shared a beautiful experiences with us. Nityanandam. Nityanandam. Welcome to NTV. Thank What's your you. name and My where are you from? My name is Girish. I'm from North Carolina, USA. <laughs> so the past few days uh, has been very exciting over here, uh, as you can see. Amazing. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience? My experience, the first thing is, uh, at least uh, in this particular IA, Swamiji is doing uh, darshan all 21 days and that's a blessing for us. And the very first darshan, Swamiji healed my eyes. Oh, I'm what? not wearing my glasses. Anymore? Now. Oh, wow. What and, was your power uh, like, sir? Um, my power was minus 2.75. Uh -huh. um, and uh, after his touch, um, I think uh, uh, there was uh, immediate you know, clarity in vision and it's improving. And uh, definitely it has made a big change. Oh, wonderful, sir. So the energy darshans uh, energy, have... the energy darshans has been uh, great, uh, especially his uh, divine energy, you know, super conscious energy that he has talked about in the last uh, couple of uh, morning messages. I urge everybody who is not here in Inner Awakening to see the morning messages for on uh, December 2010 IA. Please see this. So what about your other experience with the ashram, the food, the stay here, how I is it been? I love the food and I've asked from <laughs> Swamiji and also several other people to uh, now, uh, do a cookbook you know, for everybody. Uh, the atmosphere is excellent, mm -hmm. accommodation is great, um, you know, um, uh, the, the, you know, it's already been uh, close to a week, uh, I don't know how it passed. We're having long sessions in IA, um, you know, five in the morning to our 12 in the night and people are still uh, energetic with two hours sleep. <laughs> Great. That's the change, of, mm -hmm. uh, that's the touch of Swamiji. Mm -hmm. Today we go into a much deeper layer. It's a very deep and powerful process. <coughs> Can be confronting, but that's it. The process is called Samskara Dahana Kriya. 
samskaras are engraved emotional and emotionally charged memories which exist in us but it's going to be a radical statement that i will be telling you now your past has got zero nothing zilch to do with who you are being in the present really really <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the fundamental fighting error we do in life, the past doesn't sit in the past. It completely, almost all the time, especially the past with emotionally attached memories. All of that we put right there in the future. And depending on that, our behavior is given moment to moment. Swamiji very beautifully says. As you're growing, ideally you should blossom with intelligence, and you should have ease and spontaneity with life. But does that happen? Nityananda, our guest today is uh, Rishi Mitrananda, and he's a yoga acharya. Um, he's going to explain us a little bit about Nitya Yoga during this uh, inner awakening program. The importance of doing yoga every day during inner awakening is that there's so much transformation and energy at different levels but with the kind of energy that's moving with the master and the processes the body has to be able to hold that energy and, and sustain it so that it can start radiating that energy of enlightenment. The nature of the human body is to experience bliss, is to experience that higher levels of energy. So, uh, you said a lot about uh, yoga, but can you tell us in short lines uh, what is the difference between uh, Nitya Yoga comparing with other yogas and also how are participants responding? Mm -hmm. Invariably, people when they go through a Nitya Yoga class, everyone touches that space of vibrant silence. Just a beautiful inner space where at the end or during the whole class, you can feel the silence. It's just there. Really, it's not like there's a huge difference. If we look in the essence of many other yoga systems, like Atta Yoga, the purpose is to prepare the body for higher consciousness, for the awakening of the Kundalini. The purpose is the same. Only thing is, in society, in different places, well, we've taken yoga as a synonym of only body gymnastics, like bending the body, like a pretzel, this and that. So if we only do it with that intention of just bending the body just because it's a body and we like to look at it, we're missing a huge dimension of yoga, which is a whole inner space. So in Nitya Yoga, the whole focus is in going in, feel what's happening. Obviously being aware of the whole environment outside also, it's part of what you experience. But not missing the dimension of your own inner space, that connection that happens at a much deeper level, beyond simple thinking. It's really a feeling. So in Nitya Yoga, as we go through the experience, as we experience that connection, uh, something beautiful happens, something flowers, we call it Bhakti. And Bhakti is really it's the nectar of, of experiences, uh, just feeling that connection with life itself with the whole existence and ultimately the master the embodiment of that existential energy so uh, nitya yoga is something that can happen not only in the morning when we do it for one hour on the yoga mat but it's something that permeates our whole life once we just open up to that connection walking can be yoga eating can be yoga anything is yoga just that state of eternal uniting between the body, the mind, and just the whole being. So instead of being fragmented all the time between different agendas, we just integrate ourselves totally. And where? Here, right now, in that present moment. Because nothing else exists. It's just here. It's there. So you just feel it. That's all. So that's Nitya Yoga. We will keep you updated with all the information about Inner Awakening. Now, let us end our news with a quote from Swamiji. If you just accept yourself 
and remember you are unique, suddenly you will radiate grace. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for tomorrow's updates on NTV Nityanandam.